precious ones welcome to change makers international assembly of the apostolic church where we are molding lives to fulfill destinies on behalf of the young papa of the house and lady bediaku we welcome you all to the month of january 2022 we thank god we have crossed over to 2022 if you are listening to me right now it means that you have made it to 2022 and you have every cause and every reason to bless the name of god this year is a year of advancement if this is the first time of you joining us we encourage you to be part of the great fellowship we share at change makers international assembly these are the dates and events in the month of january winnie can you tell us some of the activities during the month of january absolutely Command your morning every day by joining us on Fresh Oil, Monday through Friday on the prayer line from 5 a.m. to 5.30 a.m. On Wednesday, we have School of the Word on the Zoom conference line at 7.30 p.m. Come let us dive deep into the Word of God. We have midday prayer every Friday on the prayer line from 12 p.m. to 12.30 p.m. Prayer helps us to gain power and confidence in our daily walk with God. So join us this and every Friday at midnight on the prayer line from 12 a.m. to 1 a.m. to pray for our families, church, and our loved ones. Let's prepare for our annual 21 days fast from January 10th to January 30th. Please be part of this spiritual journey. All detailed information are on the screen. We encourage everyone to pay your pledges towards the church building funds. You are so special in the sight of God. We would love you to connect with us. So there is a link in the description section below. Click on it and fill out the connect card so that we can pray with you. Also, click on the link in the description section and share your testimonies so that others will be revived. We encourage everyone to click on our Google link and write a review for CMI. Also, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share our YouTube channel, Instagram, and Facebook page. Let's prepare ourselves for our marriage fast in February. Yes, love is sweet. We encourage everyone to download the Church Center app and give generously for the growth of the kingdom. As you go throughout the month of January, I want you to meditate on one of the scriptures the young papa of the house gave us this year. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 6 and 7 which says that the Lord our God said to us at Horeb, you have stayed long enough at this mountain, break camp and advance into the hills country. This is a time of greater works, for opportunities, and for world creations. 2022 is a time of advance. Until next month, I am Winifred Ekuban and Winifred Abo. See you at my news. <laughs>there is a shift in, in the atmosphere the drought is over now is the time of overflow our season of great refreshing the windows of heaven are open it's time to receive and walk in divine favor mercy and grace let's advance to take over new territories for the lord there will be a new zeal for the work of the lord every area of our lives will experience goodness love generosity we will continue to engage our community and family with the love of God, molding lives and fulfilling destinies in this season. Welcome to Changemakers International Assembly. And now get ready for the word of God as we welcome God's servants, Nana Bediako. We won't be here for long, but how many of you know what is happening tomorrow? What is happening tomorrow? Amen. Hallelujah. You know, 21 day fasting, usually people don't say it with a smile. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
But the beauty of it is that we have gone ahead of even the 21 day fast. Because the prayer tone was a moment that God was just preparing us for what is ahead of us. One of the best things anybody can tell you is for you to engage in divine exchange that I'm letting go of what I desire, what I love so much in exchange for your supernatural power, for your exchange for divine direction. Hallelujah. There are many times that God instructed the people of Israel. Hallelujah. That... Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Amen, 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 amen. Now, can we put our hands together for the Lord? The Lord is good. And all the time. God is good. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Please have your seat. The Lord is good. Israel that wait upon me. Fast and wait upon the Lord. Hallelujah. This morning what I try to let us get is to get our mind ready for this 21 day fast. Hallelujah. Whatever you do, if you do without your understanding, it becomes something just normal. But when you do with your understanding and with your spirit behind it, then you will receive the unction and the blessing that comes with what you are doing. Amen. Hallelujah. We are embarking on a 21-day fast starting tomorrow to the 30th. And my prayer is that you will be part of it. Amen. Amen. You all will agree with me that everything that is valuable, most of the most valuable things are hidden deep down. Whether they are deep down under the sea or they are deep down in the grounds, when you look at diamonds, you look at gold, bauxite, oil, everything that is of high value, you find them hidden deep down somewhere. Where you have to dig down, you have to pay certain price to be able to get to the things that are so valuable to you. That beautiful gold that you see, that gold ring that you, you have on or that diamond that you have on, if you look at its original state, it does not look so beautiful, but it goes through a process. This 21 days, some of us are going to go through a process. And by going through that process, there are burdens that will be rolled away. This year of advancement and this year that we cut off certain things from following us, for you to be able to enjoy that state of advancement, there is a price to pay. Paying the price through prayer and fasting. I want us to turn our Bibles to the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. A very common scripture that we all know. Amen. Hallelujah. Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Amen. Hallelujah. Today we don't have our our projector uh, screen so Please get your Bibles ready. There will be a few scriptures that I want us to read. And what I'm, I want us to do is that your feet will be fed this morning and you'll be able to starve every doubt to death and let us get ready for these 21 days. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 says that, If my people who are called by my name... There are a lot of religions out there. Every religion, one... Uh, form or the other engage in prayer so there are times that prayer has just become a normal thing there are people who don't believe in god and they still say that oh i i prayed i don't know who they pray to but there is something that when you add on top of prayer it changes things and it cuts in asunder and break every barrier and every stronghold of the evil one and that is fasting there are many a times that people said, I went through a fast. 
But if you go through a fast without prayer and without reading the word, it is not fasting. It is called what? Hunger strike. <laughs> I like that. I like starving also. Yes. But when you go through a fast and you add prayer, meditation, and reading of the word on top of it, it changes things. The Bible says that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. The word humble here is the same meaning or interpretation of waiting upon the Lord, engaging in the fast. So the Lord is saying that if my people who are called by my name, you and I, we are called by Jehovah God. If those of us who identify ourselves with Jehovah God... If we will humble ourselves, if we will make time to fast and to wait upon the Lord and to pray and to seek his face. In the season of advancement, it is all about seeking the face of God. It's all about God, what do you want me to do? I don't want to go back I, I, I to the moments where I sit behind the wheels and I try to drive myself until I get to a place where I don't know where to turn that I cry unto God. But we want to move in this time and in this season where before I step into the car, I said, God, take the wheels. That I don't want to move by myself anymore, but I want to hear from you. The times of making wrong detours and creating delays for our lives and the lives of our family needs to be over. There are many a times that we go before God only when it doesn't work. We go before God when it, it messes around. Then we say, oh God, why did you give this to me? But God didn't give it to you. You took it yourself and then you brought it before God and asked for God for endorsement. Those days should be over when you say, God, uh, it is easy. It is easy. You know, the beauty of it is that there are many a times when David went before God, not because he did not have the ability to win battles. He was strong enough and had people that can win battles. But David will go before God and say, God, should I go? Because it is not about your strength. It is not about how good you are. I was sharing with someone yesterday, uh, someone that I heard that the whole family throughout the COVID season, they did not want to go anywhere. They stayed home. Nobody visited them. They didn't visit anybody. They didn't have contact with anybody. And they still had COVID. So you realize that it is not how careful I am, but it is that which is working with you and guiding you. There are people who are very old in their 80s and in their 90s and they are going to church and they are walking around and COVID is bouncing off of them and you have young people that are getting infected. It is by the grace of God. If my people who are called by my name, if they will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. A lot of time we quote this scripture and we delete that part. Turn from their wicked way. We don't mention that so much. If the people were called by my name, if the people were called by my name, and then we talk about the blessings. But there is a part that says that will turn from their wicked ways. I'm very happy that we just went through a three-day prayer tone and we are running into a 21-day fast. It is said that after 21 to 30 days, you are able to adapt a new habit. So my prayer is that whatever we cut off in 2021, don't let it follow you. Hallelujah. Uh, maybe you might be saying that, oh, he's sounding too righteous. No. We are coming here. This is a hospital where we come and we are molding lives that I used to do that, but now I'm working. He's working on me. Jesus said he didn't come for those who are well. He came for those who are sick. So the church is the place where you come and feel better. 
So you might come in with a form of an addiction in the next six months, but the year, you need to turn back and say, ah, I remember I used to do those things, but I don't do them no more. We are molding life. Like God is, we, we are the clay in the hands of God. And He's molding us and fixing us and changing us. That one day at a time, you will be in His image. So nobody turns away from their wicked ways. 360, you are surprised and overnight, you are perfect. God understands that we have to go through a process. But it comes from you humbling yourself and say, God, take this wheel, take this load. I have struggled by myself, but I couldn't. I have done it by my own. I have done it many times. But today I am coming before you and I said, God, have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. And he meets the woman at the well. And he began to tell her her story. And she knew that, yes, this man knows me. But Jesus didn't judge. And that day was the first evangelist. That woman began to propagate the gospel, began to talk about Jesus. It does not matter where you have been. It does not matter the messes of your past. He says that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked way. The fact that you made up your mind that I'm going to turn around. You began to walk in the righteousness of the Lord. Then he says, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Ah, there shall be some healing this year. And when I'm talking about healing, I'm not talking about just healing in your body. But if the Lord says, I will heal their land, it means that the harvest that you used to reap this time around, because the Lord has brought healing into your life, your harvest will change. The things that you used to struggle, you will not struggle to do them no more. These 21 days, I don't want you to be afraid, but I want you to be part of it. But even as you are getting part of it, start with the determination. Have a goal and say, God, this is what I am bringing before you. This is my desire. That this 21 days, let me hear from you. Uh, I don't want to just let go. There's a price that you are paying. And whenever you pay a price, there is a reward. There's a reward. You go to the gym and then you work out. Uh, someone registered for the gym and for six months stood on the scale and said, I don't know why I'm not losing weight. But the person registered and didn't go to the gym and was expecting to lose weight. Hallelujah. You cannot try to go fight somebody who is a, a, a heavyweight and you are training like a featherweight and expect to go and win that battle. No. In our year of advancement, we will have to make certain decisions. You have to come to that place and say, listen, I am tired of being here. But the Lord said that I've been here too long and I need to move. But for me to get to this point, there's a lot that I need to do to get here. Hallelujah. I want to quickly talk about prayer. We'll talk a little bit about fasting. I just want to get yourself ready. It's not because most of us don't know, but we want to refresh our mind. Amen. Uh, is there anybody here who does not know what prayer is? Amen. You know, we always get a simple definition that prayer is communicating with God. Prayer is talking to someone. So whenever someone tells me that, I want to learn. I don't know how to pray. I said, are you able to communicate with your friends and your family? Are you able to talk to people over the phone? It's the same thing. God doesn't judge us based on how fluent you are, how eloquent you are. What concerns God is that you come before him and you talk to him like you talk to your father. And say, God, this is what I'm going through. And nobody can help me but you. And I'm here to receive from you. I'm here that you will help me. Hallelujah. When you need something from your mom, is that your daughter? What's your name? 
page, page. I see the way you are holding your mom. I could tell that you are very close. All right? I know that there are certain things that when you need, you know how to get it from your mom. You know how to let your mom buy you that favorite gift. No? She's tough? <laughs> Hallelujah. What I'm trying to say is that when you need something from your dad, when you need something from your mom, there are ways in which you say it to get it. The same way, that is how you talk to your father in heaven. Say, Heavenly Father, this is what I need. Lord, this is what I'm going through and I need help from you. Hallelujah. It is easy for you to wake up and just talk to God like you talk to your father. God doesn't care about the kinds of words. He doesn't care how many words you can put together to impress him. He's not impressed by that. He's impressed about your heart and how you are pouring your heart before him like you pour your heart before your loved ones. Hallelujah. There's a definition that I love about prayer. For those of you who are taking notes, you could write it down. It says that it's earthly license for heavenly interference through faith. Earthly license. And there is a quote by John Wesley that I love so much. It says that without God, man cannot. And without man, God will not. I'll repeat it. Without God, man cannot do anything. But without man, God will not. What it means is that God has given us jurisdictional authority over this earth. So you realize that through our scripture, whatever God wants to do, he does it through man. Not because he doesn't have the power and the ability to do it, but he does it through man. And he does it when men pray. Now, when you pray, you are giving heaven permission to act on your behalf. That is why as a child of God, you always cannot go through a day or a season without praying. Whatever you agree and believe, God will do it. Let's look at Matthew chapter 18 verses 19. Earthly license for heavenly interference. Matthew chapter 18, verse 19. You are my reader, so whoever opens it, please don't waste time. Let's go through it. If Matthew Amen. is in the New Testament. Matthew, <laughs> Matthew chapter 18, verse, what? verse 19. Again, truly, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Amen. Amen. If two of you agree upon touching anything on this earth, it will be done by my Father in heaven. Which means that heaven is ready. Our Father is ready to act. But they will act unless you open your mouth and you speak. One of the mysteries about the power of two and about couples coming together to pray. I can guarantee you that if you make a statistics and if you go to the church right now and you pick up maybe 100 couples, you probably might get two or few that are able to pray together. Because there is a supernatural power in the prayer of the two. The Bible says that one shall put a thousand to flee, but two shall put ten thousand to flee. So most of the time, the devil tries to engage us and make us so busy so that we are not able to agree. When the husband and the wife comes together and they agree upon touching that, God, this is what we need for you to do. We need this direction. We need this breakthrough. Let me tell you, heaven is ready to respond. This 21 days, what we are going to do is that there are types of fasting. There are individual fasting when you fast on your own. 
But these 21 days, we are having a corporate fast where the church, we are coming together to agree upon certain things. And one of the vision, one of the prayer points for us these 21 days is that, Lord, may you give us the city, give us the county, give us the state. In the year of one is to two, we have to see it. We have to see it. And it will happen. Uh, we don't know how God is going to do it, but it will happen. Amen. What we have seen this morning is a reflection that the Lord will do it. Amen. Even if you don't believe it, he will do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Heaven is waiting for you to speak. Amen. This 21 days, don't take it for granted. In the season of advancement, don't forget that the enemy is not going to sleep. In the season of your blessing, he's not going to sleep. But it will take those who are willing and ready to stand and pray and take that which belongs to you. In Jesus' name. Another definition of prayer is legal appeal for demand. Legal appeal for demand. And it's called petition. We see that in the book of Daniel chapter 9, verse 2 to 3. The Bible says that after the season and the time of Israel's bondage and slavery was ended, Daniel inquired of the Lord and petitioned the Lord. Now, for you to send a petition to any office, there are two important things. One, you have to know that what you are petitioning for is in the law. You cannot petition anything that is not according to the law of the land. So what Daniel was doing was that Daniel read the books. The Bible says that he read the books and he realized that the season and the time for Israel to be out of bondage was due. This is where you realize that whatever belongs to you, if you don't speak it, if you don't seek it, if you don't pray about it, just drop it in your hands. No. It was time for Israel to get out of slavery but it took Daniel to read through the books and petition the Lord and say, God, ah, the time for us to come out of this slavery is due. And he did it according to the law. That is why this year you got to know the word. We have started our Bible reading competition and I want you to get into it. No matter what it is, listen, if you miss some days, don't stop and say, I miss some days. Just keep moving. Just keep moving. This year, it is all about those who will stay on, who, 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 who will be on focus and keep moving. No matter the delays, just keep moving. Just keep moving. Whatever we are doing, our prayer meetings, Bible reading, fellowship, whatever we are doing, do not miss it. Just get involved. Get involved. Because in the season of advancement, it will take how you position yourself. Hallelujah. The Bible says, and Daniel prayed. And the Lord answered, if Daniel had not prayed, the answers would not have come, even though the Lord said, after 70 years, you will come out. But it was past 70 years. But God didn't say, hey, the 70 years is up. That is why they say that ignorance is not an excuse. And the Bible says, for lack of knowledge, my people perish. When you understand the word and you believe the word, and you speak the word and you declare the word, it will work. The word of God is alive, living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. If only you will believe it, it will work. For some of us, we've come this far just by the word of God and holding on to the word. This 21-day fast, please spend some time. When we come together, be part of it. When you are alone, get into it. In the book of Ezra, the Bible says that when they were about to embark on their journey, they fasted and they prayed and they asked God for divine direction. Some of us, we are thinking that maybe what I need is three years from now, five years from now, but it is better for you to pray about it today. Hallelujah. I remember as a young boy, I would will, I will go to church most of the time and some of the times that I enjoyed most was when they have, you know, marriage week. 
And then they would talk about marriage. And during the marriage seminars, I used to enjoy those moments. And then sometimes I would go to church and I would be the only young one sitting in there. And everybody would say, what is he doing here? Come on, go home, go home. And then some, of, some people would say, oh, let him sit here. But through it all, what I realized was that there were times that I had things that made me fear marriage. There were things that I had that made me want, I just couldn't wait as a young boy. I said, ah, marriage will be sweet. I just couldn't wait to grow up and get married. But through it all, what I learned was that as a little boy, I realized that I needed to pray about my marriage. Because it is not easy. So there are some of us, we need to even at this moment begin to pray for the marriages of our children. Sometimes we take it for granted and we think that, oh, when, when, when my child is 18, when, when she's out of college or when she's ready and all that stuff. But there are things that we need to pray from now and say, God, I'm praying for my son. I'm praying for my child. Uh, their future, their, their marriage. Because when your child gets into the wrong relationship as a parent, it will affect you too. Especially in this season. Ah, we need to pray more for our children. So even these 21 days, have a vision, have a purpose. Don't just go through it. There are many a times that we start the 21-day fasting. And halfway through, you ask somebody, uh, for you, for you, what are you praying about? Why are you in these 21 days? And sometimes they cannot even tell you why. But I want you to go home tonight, even as we start tomorrow, and begin to write certain things down. And say, God, this is my desire these 21 days. And pray over it. Every day when you wake up, this is my prayer request. And let us agree upon them and pray over it. And you will see the hand of God this year in your life. I know what I'm talking about. And I know the power in fasting. Now, what is fasting? <laughs> fasting is willful abstaining from natural pleasures willfully don't let anybody force you to fast don't feel guilty because oh some people are fasting so if i don't fast it will affect you too especially in this season ah we need to pray more for our children so even these 21 days have a vision have a purpose don't just go through it there are many a times that we start the 21 day fasting and halfway through you ask somebody uh, for you, for you, what are you praying about? Why are you in these 21 days? And sometimes they cannot even tell you why. But I want you to go home tonight, even as we start tomorrow, and begin to write certain things down and say, God, this is my desire these 21 days. And pray over it. Every day when you wake up, this is my prayer request. And let us agree upon them and pray over it. And you will see the hand of God this year in your life. I know what I'm talking about. And I know the power in fasting. Now, what is fasting? <laughs> fasting is willful abstaining from natural pleasures. Willfully. Don't let anybody force you to fast. Don't feel guilty because, oh, some people are fasting. So if I don't fast, they might think that I'm not spiritual. No. It is a willful abstaining from certain pleasures that you desire. Amen. What are some of the things that you desire most that you can't you can just stop doing it on a daily basis? I'm not asking you because I know. Jenny, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know that this 21 days the coffee is gonna be whew. really. <laughs> My problem was not the coffee, so <laughs> she says she's on tea. <laughs> Hallelujah! So, willful abstaining. So, there are people. Who are addicted to shopping and they said I meant for 21 days I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go to the mall that's fine we live in a season where 
if people leave their phone at home, their whole day is messed up. Someone lost their phone one day and you could tell how miserable the person was. So it means that there are certain things that we cannot abstain. There are people who are hooked to certain shows and if they miss one episode, it's like their whole day is in ruin. This 21 days, we want to be able to put certain things on hold and wait on the Lord. I can't tell you what you need to put on hold, but you know yourself. But it's willful abstaining of certain pleasures, certain things that we love most. But as a corporate church, we want to engage in the fast where we will wait upon the Lord and pray and study the word of God. We are going through a corporate fast as a church. There are many kinds and many types of fast. But my point is that I don't want to burden all of us here, but I want you to at least engage in a type of fast. If it is okay with your doctors, if some of you have some medical issues, eat this fast. Hallelujah. And whatever you do, make sure that you have an aim. There's a reason why you are taking part of this fast and not doing it because the church declared it so you are doing it. No. There are certain things that can only be done by prayer and by fasting. Hallelujah. What to do before you begin your fast? Quickly, as I mentioned before, number one, have a goal. Have a goal. Have a vision. Have a mission. That this 21 days, this is the reason. The Bible says that when Daniel began to read the books, Daniel chapter 9 and chapter 10, Daniel came to a conclusion that I need to set myself apart. I need to fast and pray and seek God's face that I will hear from God. And the first thing he began to do was to ask for forgiveness for his fathers and his forefathers. Everything that they had done, that does not please God. Daniel sought for forgiveness for the nation of Israel. But before Daniel began the fast, Daniel had a purpose. Hallelujah. Haman had planned a genocide against the people of Israel. But Esther was in a place of comfort. Esther was in a place where she had enough food. She was a queen. She was in the palace. But Esther realized that, ah, this thing, I cannot get it done by eating. So Esther spoke with Mordecai and said, go and gather the people and let them fast for three days. I will go and I and my women, we will also fast for three days. Esther had a purpose and a vision for the fast. He said that, that the Lord will have mercy over my people. And the agenda of the enemy was turned around through prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. Jesus will always go and fast. And the moment that Jesus fasted most was after the breakthrough had happened. When Jesus continued to do more miracles, the Bible says that he would go into the mountains and pray and fast. Why? Why would Jesus fast that the unction and the power and the anointing upon him will be great? So have a purpose, have a vision. For some of us, this 21 days, it might be a spiritual gift that you've been praying for. For some of us, it might be that you will hear clearly and say, God, what do I need to do? I, I, I'm at this crossroad and I don't know to go to the east, west, north and south. But God, I need you to direct me. I want to hear from you. And I guarantee you, after the 21 days, you will hear clearly. It might be through a dream. It might be through a word that will come forth here. It might be through somebody calling you and say that the Lord has given me a message for me to give to you. That you will receive divine direction. This 21 days fasting, you might be here and you are seeking divine direction. God, where should I go? Should I get into this business? Should I get into this investment? This school? This job offer? Uh, uh, should, I, should I do this investment? Uh, you, are, you are seeking for God's divine direction. But this 21 days, we will hear from God. So what are some of the reasons for fasting that we will hear from God as a church? That you will hear from God as a husband? You will hear from God as a family? God, what do you want for my family? That we will receive divine direction. Hallelujah. Let us get connected. Let us love one another. 
and don't forget to pray and don't forget to join us this 21 day fast lift up your beautiful hands let's receive the benediction may the king of kings and the lord of lords preserve your going out and your coming in whatever your hands finds to do this week and beyond may you prosper May you receive divine direction. May you receive grace. May you receive unction from on high. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey there, we trust you were truly blessed by the sermon. We would love to see you at one of our services soon. Check out our website at www.changemakersnj.org for all of our contact information, meeting times, and ways you can give to support the ministry. God bless you. Sing with me now. Look at me up.